How's it? Hang loose. Alright, I got my little setup here and it's newspaper slash talk story or talk story slash newspaper. And the reason I'm doing this is, you know, I mean, the newspaper series here was following one story, but I wound up all these other stories of can't get away. And, you know, I wanted to bring, like, happiness about it, you know, and get over, you know, well, know the news, not ignore it, know it, but not let it affect you in a darker, negative way. And so that was the little plan, and boy, I'm all over the map, so. And then I'm acquiring some of these, have a little backstory of myself, because I'm in Hawaii, and I'm trying to focus on Hawaii news. Matter of fact, we have 284 new cases. 284 new cases. Now here, I'll just go over this one real quick. It makes it possible for stricter emergency rules to be more likely, which means the newspaper story I'm covering in the first place, the September 1st Trans-Pacific Travel Pre-Testing Waiver. Uh, I called it test to travel and hope it never caught on. Test and travel. Test and travel. Uh, well, anyways, that September 1st thing, which was postponed one month already, is probably poof. They haven't officially announced it because they're not going to... They haven't officially announced the massive... The lieutenant governor. I do expect the governor will have to likely recommend some additional restrictions to the coming days that that we do that to save lives yes yes and yes however they're hesitant to just drop the bombshell because 58 percent of the state's ICU beds and 16 percent of the ventilators are in use they're close to overload so this might be small numbers in the big picture, but for here, it's huge numbers, and they're about to get locked down, which is stay-at-home orders, which is right what happened when the fur virus first started out. So our rate of increases, our rate of spreading the virus is top five of all the nation, all the nations, of all the nations in all the, in all the states. Yeah. We're the 50th state. We are a state of the Union of the United States of America as of 1959. Young, but still a state. Some people still are fuzzy on that. They want to keep the... Yeah, yeah. Anyways. I basically grew up here since first grade. I went to first grade here. You know. And I need to tell this story because it's kind of like a conf fashion in a way and it relates to what's going down in the news which is about Obama's retirement mansion in Kailua being developed but first let me take you back to when I was a wee lad not elementary school well a little late in elementary school more like, yeah, late elementary school, what you call middle school, we used to call it intermediate. I had a friend, and he was an older friend who was, knew my sister, and he'd take us out hiking and spearfishing and all kinds of cool ass, and UH art, it's the greatest guy, and very, very talented, and just an overall, a, a minor Leonardo da Vinci, you might say. And so me as a kid tagging along, we go hiking. Well, one time, well, a lot of times, we went hiking in search of Hawaiian artifacts on Oahu, which actually is very, very rare. Everything's gone. There's nothing. It's all developed. If you find a Hawaiian artifact, wow. <laughs> Shit's going on. Sorry. So... We would do the hikings on the publications of one Dr. Kenneth Emery, 
an 1800s archaeologist for the Bishop Museum. I worked for them once, but Kenneth Emery was Bishop Museum's archaeology squad in the, you know, and that guy did everything. So he made publications, and the Bishop Museum published the publications. So we could take the publications and look at the maps and the design and the archaeology report and go visit these things and see if there's anything left behind. Well, that's what we would do. You know, we found little bits and stuff and learned a lot about ancient Hawaiian, not the kings and queens, the ancient Hawaiian culture. One time we were looking and we found caves and some of these caves are very hidden, hidden caves, hidden on purpose. Oh boy, I'll make this short. One was a burial cave. It turned out to be a burial cave where the Hawaiians, at sometimes they would bury in caves and all their bones were prepared and they were in the caves. So we went into this one cave. Actually, when we went there, we found the cave. We had to go back with, we didn't have flashlights, so we had candles. So when we first discovered the skulls, Notice my, this is a prop. When we first discovered the skulls, they were um, in a pile. It was by candlelight. We first discovered them. We had to go in candlelight. I hear, there's skulls in here! I'm like, <gasps> mind you, this is like, you know, I don't know, almost a decade before Indiana Jones movie. <laughs> it was like way before that stuff. So we were doing this amateur archaeology thing. We found this burial cave. We go in there. The skulls were in a big pile. Long bones were in a big pile. The other bones were in a big pile. That's what I remember. And we did a head count of the skulls, and there were about 16. 16 skulls. Now, I don't know if you know about mana in Eevee, which are the bones, but it's like the power of a person when they died, it's, it stays in the bones is the belief and so they were careful to hide the bones because the opposing community or tribe or group could take those bones and make bone fish hooks and take the mana and use their mana to get fish and so they were careful about their preserving the bones and their where they were so here we go we decided not to tell the Bishop Museum because they would just take the bones and find nothing. We looked around, there's nothing, there's only bones. There was a small newspaper clip in probably 20s and 30s. There's just a piece of paper. And we knew the bones were not piled like that by the Hawaiians. So somebody had knew about the cave before and disturbed it, and there was no artifacts. And so, there you go. But it's not the happenstance of finding that burial cave, ancient Hawaiian burial cave, that was a fault of mine. When I went back and I showed some friends, you know, different times, and I showed some friends from the university I went to here, and those Lolos went back to the cave on their own, took two skulls, and removed them, and put them on their dorm room shelf. Put a little cigarette in there, you know, clove cigarette, sunglasses, goofy hat. And I was like, what the fuck? Now mind you, when I had showed them, it was already, it went from 16 and when I showed them, it was like less. So people were already taking bones. But they took them, so we made a mission to go bring the two skulls back. And we went there, it was dark and rainy. Of course, we got stoned and drinking black label beer, arg, cheap beer, arg. So we had beer in the backpack, we were smoking. We went to the place, it already got dark. So we were too late, so it was already dark. And then it started to rain, and we're stuck in the car, and it's pouring rain with lightning bolts. <laughs> What? what? And then it stopped raining. 
and I had brought two flashlights and they had brought a candle and we decided to go up into the hike at night I figured I know what I'm doing so I gave them the flashlights and I took the candle we hiked up too far it's hard to find so I'm not gonna get too much into where it is but it's hard to find so we hiked up too high and they were hiking back those guys made it farther with the flashlights then we're just like go back to the car we couldn't find it we still had the skulls and I I was like walking I had the candle I couldn't see the candle in front of me I couldn't see so I held the candle up above my head and there's like reeds and twigs and holly cobra and then I just walked right off of a cliff and it was about mm, 15 to 30 15 20 feet it was kind of far it was a lot of rock so I fell down my knee fell like that and I landed completely on my left knee opened up my left knee hitting full force falling by walking off a cliff holding a candle with a skull and beer in my backpack <sighs> my friend Woody came up and he's like are you okay no and we went to the drug off the mountain off to the emergency room where I got 13 stitches in my knee three o'clock in the morning four o'clock in the morning with this baby and you're crying <laughs> It's like, oh, it was painful. And I got infected later and almost lost my leg there, too. It was close. And I did this whole botch out out of science classes and at the university. They were like microbiology and all kinds of hardcore. And I was like, Dah, I'm a stupid guy now. So I suffered quite enough, but still yet, there it is. Now, I didn't watch the time on this, so... Oh my god, my audio is probably going to be so haunted. Vine Spiritus Sancti Spiritus Vine Sancti Spiritus Vine Sancti Spiritus No oh shit. Bless me. <clears throat> now for today's paper. This beach house. The Obama, I guess, people are going to. Now, with this beach house, it's in Kailua. And there, it's a, it's a really cool beach, but it's small, and it's overrun by tourists now. And this guy, someone, his friend, while he was still president, they bought this house. Now they're developing it bigger and bigger and bigger. Now this whole thing is about the fronting property, the historic turtle pond that used to feed Hawaiian chiefs. So there's a archaeological significant pond in front of it which they took out and rebuilt bigger next down uh, Waimanalo Hawaiian community native native Hawaiian community this is the guys that are they don't have um, houses so they're houseless but they've gathered together on Waimanalo Beach right down the road and there's just tons and tons of tents. It's like a giant homeless camp, right? Giant, but it's all native Hawaiians. And they're all saying, it's like, my land, our land, our land, right? We can live on it. We don't have to be our land. It's that nature of houseless camp, and it's big. It's right down the road. Now, regular people in Waimanalo, uh, this is Waimanalo, and say it's like South Kailua so I'm just gonna run into this because I think this has already went 16 okay come on come on come on give me a coastal estate here we go so lotus oh the seawall no beach and now beaches that can migrate without the seawall, right? See beaches that can't migrate landward due to seawalls effectively drown. I, I don't know, whatever the wording. The beaches, the sand can't go back and forth or whatever. The seawalls block that, and it's a huge concern. 
Um, there's like this outside sea wall. They have this kind of thing going on. And by the way, before I continue further with the story, here it is, a picture of the estate that was purchased in 2015 while Obama was in his seventh year of office, Nesbit, under an entity called Waimanalo Paradise LLC, closed a sale for $8.7 million at the time. Nesbit told Fox affiliate KJON TV, I am the sole purchaser and did not have any partners or co-investors in the transaction. The White House also played down the purchase. The president is not a party to this transaction, a senior administration told Politico. <coughs> hint, hint, while he was president, this guy buys this. It has nothing to do with the president, because it was a thing. Here's Nesbitt and Obama walking down the beach. They've been buddies for freaking forever. They're just like friends, man. Hey, bro. Hey, brother. They, they often come to Hawaii together with their families, isn't it? So this guy buys the property while president, he's in president, while he was president. So that was contention number one. Now the seawall stuff, because what they do is they can buy the land underneath the seawall. They can rent it from the state of Hawaii for a one-time fee of $61,000. It's like yours for 55 years. Bam. So now, since they have that, they can find other loopholes. So Obama's so-called first friend, quoting here, so-called first friend, first lady, first friend, or president, first friend. <clears throat> they the redeveloping the sprawling estate, which include three new single family homes, two pools, a cess an septic tank, you know what cesspool. Cesspool. Mm -hmm and beachfront and a guardhouse and pools so as one big estate no no but they cut it up and made oh we're gonna have three homes and it's gonna be one big like compound oh by the way i didn't tell you what i was going to tell you here's the estate as it was before right Does it look familiar this is the place where they filmed magnum pi the first one, you know, Higgins, my god, Magnum, and the two dogs, uh, Zeus and Apollo, the Doberman Pinchers. This is the Magnum estate for the Magnum show, the first one. Ferrari. Yeah, it didn't belong, it, it, was, it was from somebody else, I mean, I think. Masons probably had something to do with it. The hours in there somewhere. But they sold it. This guy Nesbitt bought it. Had nothing to do with the Obamas. Now they're breaking it up. They're making seawalls. Now they're going to tear down the seawall that they rented out. Now that they have it's like loopholes and loopholes for developers to just expand. The people on Kalu are going crazy. Because their beaches are going like freaking seawalls again. We're trying to tear down seawalls and you're building seawalls. They want to tear down the seawall and make a bigger seawall. And that's where this all hell comes up. Now, now you got the background picture. Mm -hmm. Now, same page on the, uh, I mean, same page, the same page. Also on the front page, the other side article, bones found on property tied to Obama, causing tension with Native Hawaiians. They've been finding bones, which means the ancient Hawaiians were using the beach, because they'll bury people on the beach too. There's caves and there's beach burials. I used to work in archaeology, and I actually worked for the Bishop Museum at one point, just for a wee bit. And we had burials that weren't Hawaiian on the H3 freeway project, in the building the third freeway tunnel. On both sides of the tunnel, I worked archaeology, and the bones weren't Hawaiian. I know I had to sit next to the bones. You'll, I'll tell you archaeology stories later, but bones. 
human bones. This, this is plastic. This is a, a medical model. Okay, obviously. Oops. And there's the, what's that for the Hawaiian cares? Hey, hi there. I'm not real. Oh my god, he's got a third eyeball. Okay. Now I'm going to do a demo. But, I don't know. But we shall see. This one here, they found bones when they were digging the cesspool and swimming pool. So they found bones. Now this person, there's Oahu Island Burial Council, which is going to meet real soon. They have a monthly meeting. There's a Kamu Ella Ka Kalaai, 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 and she's heading that. Uh, Evie is Hawaiian for bone, and she's uh, heading that. Oh, jeez. Watch out, bad mana. You're in trouble. You're in trouble, buddy. The fish pond that fed the kings, that royalty elite. The boy, bones of a boy found when they're digging up the swimming pool. And other bones. Obama's personal office declined comment on the Waimanalo property, referring inquiries to Nesbitt. The first lady, I mean, friend. Before Nesbitt broke ground in the Waimanalo state, uh, surveyors conducted a state law to check for burials in 2018. They found the remains of a young boy, this ancient Hawaiian boy. So they presented the burial plan to Oahu Burial Council, Kala'i. 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 I hope I'm saying your name right. I know it's cliche to say that, but I'm serious. Kala'i. Kala'i. That's it, Kala'i. Asked if she could be honor, honor the boy before she covered it back up. The gravesite, she remembers, her, her, they offered a pulu, it's a prayer, made her Hawaiian answer so long ago, and buried her listening close over there. Okay, I'm ready to give that support. Okay, so they buried the boy on site, but not in the same place, because they were digging and they're already putting stuff that already did construction. Then in January, Thank you, cryptocurrency. Yeah. In January this year, two more sets of human remains were found on the construction. For months, the bones were stored in what state officials referred to as a, quote, temporary curation facility, unquote. Kala, 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 I, kala. Kala'i said, who visited the E.V. Kapuna. Kapuna is like elders. Kapuna, like your grandparents. Kapuna. E.V. is bone. So the bones of the ancestors on the property in April, they were being stored in a bottom drawer of a filing cabinet inside a construction trailer. She said the baskets containing the bones were covered with black mildew. The bones had been placed there while wet. Holy shit. You, and then Kala'i, right? She's the head of the office, this Oahu Burial Council. You don't just dig them out of the ground and put them in the bottom of a filing cabinet and forget about them, she told Oahu Burial Council last month. So she's talking to the council on a, a Hawaiian, each and Hawaiian burials, right? And then you don't come to me and ask me to help you figure out the solution and then cut me off and go pour the freaking concrete in the swimming pool so we cannot put the kapuna back now. So she's miffed at the council for mismanaging it, but the whole thing is fervoring up. And mind you, just down the road, you got a gigantic encampment of houseless native Hawaiian get off our land almost at me. Certain individuals likely to insert themselves in the process of the Let's get to this fun stuff here. Fun as in, oh, I can't believe this. Another burial specialist for the state, this one lady. While she typically advocates preserving EV Kapuna in place, in this case, their owners were not only planning the pool area, but a septic tank for the treatment of the property's wastewater. So, basically, 
you can't bury the bones back in place archaeology in situ in that same situation they were in in situ <laughs> You learned a word. You learned a word. Archaeology. In situ. S I T U. Trust me, all the archaeologists act like they're Indiana Jones. <laughs> it's hilarious. I don't think keeping Kapoon in a situation when they're adjacent to a leech field or septic tank is ever acceptable. No, I mean, you can put the bones back to a. It's like. You're. What do you mean? literally a bleep hole. I'm tired of editing out. <clears throat> Kala, Kala E now worries that any runs will be unearthed, particularly if the owners get permission to break ground on the seawell renovation. In June, the Barrel Council officially recognizes the cultural descendant of the... In June, the Barrel Council officially recognized her as cultural descendant of the area and consultants say she will be notified if any more remains are found. <gasps> now she's official descendant, too. That's not just Hawaiian. That's like, you know, they got to work the state government. This chair indicated that Evie Kapuna at the Waimanalo estate would be on the agenda again for this month's meeting, August 26th. Oh, my God. Oh, my God, Magnum. What you got here is gonna be huge. And you can kiss that first friend goodbye. <laughs> Little Bob and Mr. Spider. Um, I've decided to uh, go someplace else. And, but, and my official confession was, you know, it, it wasn't, you know, I showed them the cave where the skulls were. And it didn't affect me at all, you know. Um, but they shouldn't, they went back and took them. I thought I shouldn't have showed them the place. And, um, you know, we took, we were taking the skulls back. So, even though, uh, my friend took the skull in my backpack, he took it out and he threw it into the night. And, but, uh, there's, there's no curse on us and nothing wrong, nothing wrong with, uh, you know, ancient Hawaiian bones here. Nothing wrong at all. So, y'all have a hang loose day. <laughs> Speaking of hanging a hang loose days, I better wrap this. But there is, uh, I've been looking for other things, and we have to celebrate the the birthday, the hundred eighty sixth birthday, hundred eight hundred eighty six years old, something like that. We have to get back to uh, the 186th anniversary of the birthday of Jeff the Talking Mongoose. Yes, I came across a paranormal story involving involving a talking mongoose on the Isle of Man. And you can look it up. Talking Monk Goose on the Isle of Man. You can ring yourself up the backstory of that if you want. I'm going to delve into it slightly because of, I don't know, small particulars of a very strange, probably a demonic infestation thing. But it doesn't look like that on the surface. Plus, it's Talking Mongoose and Hey, it's mongoose that's away. <laughs> Talking mongoose. <laughs> Gotta check it out. Anyways. Well, stay safe. Wear your masks. Eh? Don't take it too seriously. Hang loose. Aloha.